What's going on, YouTube fans? VP Nation, once again, finna upload. You know, just finna give my thoughts. Last night, you know, I was watching the boxing fight um, with Sarfest Jr., that boxing fight. I'm gonna talk about a couple of things, actually. I'm gonna talk about judges and their decisions, promotions, and Pacquiao, well, not Pacquiao, but Bradley Marquez and Mayweather. Also, those are the couple of topics I'm going to touch on right now. And like I say, this is just my opinion. You can agree with me, disagree. Please let me know if you disagree or if you agree with me. Please let me know why you agree with me. Um, feel free to leave any comments. My channel is open. Knuckles coming back to you once again. So, Hey, it is what it is. But um, last night I was watching that boxing fight. Um, Chavez Jr. on HBO. Um, the kid who he was fighting, I really don't know. But this is a strange thing. This whole event was something strange. Um, of course, you know Chavez Jr. living off his daddy name, Chavez Senior. Um, great boxer. When his dad, I mean his. I, I, when I say great boxer, I'm speaking about his father. Chavez Sr., great boxer, great boxing career. And so now his son is getting into the boxing game or has been in the boxing game. I think he fought like 49 times. This made 50 or 51 right here. Um, and this just goes to show you how political and somewhat how corrupted boxing is. Depending on, you know, the average Joe, you don't have a big powerhouse behind you. Or you don't have the great promotion behind you or the name in boxing itself, you can't get a fair shake. But unfortunately it's like that in life. Regardless, you know, you're not gonna get a fair shake. You know, the people who always has everything behind them, they get everything. That's just how it is, I guess. I don't know. Maybe we can kinda change that. That's why I'm making this blog right now to post my opinions about that. Um So, going into the Charvez fight, which just happened last night on HBO, um, of course, you know, Charvez, he did not make weight. They were supposed to fight at 161. They agreed upon weight was 172. That's 11 pounds heavier. Because you could not make weight. And, frankly, it's pretty much unfair that this dude did not come down to make weight. But I get it. You don't make weight. But I never heard of a fight still going on 10 or 11 pounds heavier than what the schedule work weight supposed to be. Um, I, You know, if you can make weight and you was like 2 or 3 pounds off, even 5 pounds off. I get that. But 11 pounds off, 7 days before the fight, he still weighed 186, 189 before the fight. 7 days before it was time for the weigh-in, he still weighed 189. So we already knew he was on schedule not to make weight. And he pretty much made sure that whatever weight he was going to come in at, which obviously was like 173, I'm thinking it was 173, maybe 176, but I'm thinking it was really 173, that he wasn't going to make it. <laughs> I mean, the weight that he was supposed to come in at was 161, and he definitely was not going to make that weight. So you had a smaller man, uh, Varez, Fighting Chavez Jr. Okay. So he got paid. Don't know how much he got paid because Chavez Jr. didn't make weight. I'm pretty sure it was great or a good sum amount. But you just never really hear those things going on. So what the training for Vares did was he said, okay, well, since Chavez didn't make weight, we also going to only fight 10 rounds because they knew Chavez was a um, slow fighter or a slow starter. When he's fight, when he when he's fighting, he won't pick up the pace until probably after the sixth round. That's when you know he figured that he try to consume his energy, and then he comes and he put pressure on you and just bombard you with punches. Um, this kid Varius, man, he is twenty seven years old, twenty seven or twenty eight years old. Man, he fought a hell of a fight. There was, and you know, I personally felt he won the fight by. Um, by three rounds, three or four rounds. Um, didn't think it was close at all. 
um, doing this fight. Chavez came in and he pretty much would say, okay, I'm going to box you and make you come to me. And then I'm going to blast you with punches because it seemed like they never showed the weight in. Normally they show the weight of the fighters as they're entering the ring. They didn't show that. But clearly Chavez had to have been like at least 180 something, like 86. He was big. I mean, big, huge. Well, I mean, it was like you noticed the difference. Huge. And um, Vasquez, uh, not Vasquez, but um, Vares took the fight to him. I mean, of course, he couldn't hurt him with his punches. He didn't have that devastating punches, knockout power that, you know, move a obviously 20-plus more heavier-sized guy than yourself. But he was taking the fight to him. He was breaking them down. He was hitting them. You know, he was aggressive. He was aggressive, um, and he was outworking them through, throughout the whole round um, of the fight. He he definitely his volume of punches was definitely way more, and he was landing those punches. They just wasn't hitting um, Chavez Junior. Because I mean, dudes like eighty. You know, he was twenty to thirty pounds more than than um, the dude, but. This is the thing that I'm so much confused about. Now, throughout that whole fight, he outworked them. Chavez, he didn't fight the whole round. But when he chose to fight and he hit him, I mean, you can clearly see he was hitting him and he made a pretty, you know, he, he got him days and buzz a couple of times when he chose to fight. He never knocked him down. He never dropped him. He never finished him. He didn't do any of that, you know, because he was too tired. He was tired. You can tell. You can tell his condition. Chavez, I don't even think he even trained for this fight. I think he just came in and said, "Okay, I'm gonna be the bigger guy, so I'm just gonna well, I'm just gonna use my weight advantage to this dude and get past this fight." Mm -hmm. I don't even think he really even took this serious. Um, but I felt like Vares, he won this fight, point blank. Period. He won the fight, and the judges. Oh my God, the judges gave the fight to Chavez. And clearly the crowd was upset and booing. And this was a sharp ass crowd. And he was upset and booing. So I don't understand how the judges gave this fight to Chavez. Well, clearly, Vargas won this fight. Point blank, period. He won the fight. I mean, one judge had it 98 to 92. Another judge had it 97, 93. I mean, clearly, I mean, they pretty much said Chavez won every round, except for two. That's clearly they didn't watch this fight. In the in the crowd, which was a Chavez Jr.'s crowd coming into this fight, was booing. You didn't hear no cheering when the judges announced the scorecard. Clearly, there's something wrong with boxing. Clearly, the, the more political man, the more connected man always get the advantage. He gets the, the decision, clearly. Clearly, Chavez did not win this fight. Clearly, he did not. But the judges gave it to him. In California, the judges gave it to him. And I don't understand how you clearly give that fight to Chavez Jr. He did not win that fight. Point blank period. He even lost the 12th round. I had him losing 10, 11, and 12. So even the later part of the fight when you thought Chavez was going to come on, I said 12th round. I'm sorry. They only went 10. He lost the 10th, the 9th, and the 8th. Clearly. Clearly lost those rounds. Those three rounds. Like, going into the 6th round, I had him tied. I had him 3-3. But 7-8th, I mean, 7-8th, well, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's early in the morning. <laughs> um, but the 10th, the 9th, and the 8th round, he clearly lost. Going in, going into the seventh round, I had to tie a three three. He clearly lost the last three rounds of this fight. I don't understand how the judges even saw that. And that brings me back to a point where, you know, it's more of the more connected political person, which is Chavez Jr. at this point, who dictated the terms and fuck you know, the, his opponent was used as a pun. It's supposed to be a stepping fight. That, you know, Chavez Jr., he'd been laid off for a year. And he was suspended. Um, he, You know, he just got beat by Sergio Martinez. You know, 
clearly this was a pun boxing match for Chavez Jr. to get this win under his belt. And no one, I mean, and Vaquez, he didn't get that point. He didn't get he didn't get the memo that he was supposed to lose that fight. And he came out there and he fought. He was more active. He outworked him. He hit him more. I mean, what more do you want? Uh, you know, at least with Mayweather, people can have the same argument where Mayweather, he doesn't do that much, but he doesn't get hit. <laughs> so someone can try to outwork you, but if you're not hitting them, then yo, you outworking them really doesn't mean anything. But this wasn't the case here where Chavez Jr. actually got outworked and he was getting tagged. He was getting hit, clearly. Sorry. And, you know, my, my father even called me when they announced their score, when they announced the uh, scorecard, and he's in Atlanta, and right now I'm I'm in Arkansas, visiting my uh, grandmama, and he was like, "Did you see that?" He was like, "What?" You know, I was like, "Yeah," and we we did not watch the fight together, so he was watching the fight, and I was watching the fight, and he asked to call me, and it was like, "Hey, did you see the judges? I mean, what was the judges scoring?" And he was, and my dad was like, he was actually rooting for Sarvez Junior. But he did not win that fight. <laughs> now, this is coming from my dad who was rooting for the person who they announced won the fight. And my dad clearly said that he didn't win the fight. And I, I wasn't rooting for no one. I was just watching the fight. And I felt like Chavez Jr. did not win that fight. And that that's almost like the more political person always get the benefits. Always. Clearly. No matter what's going on. Always get the benefits. Um, That's almost like, you know, when Canelo fought. Austin Trout. I felt Austin Trout won that fight because I felt he outworked him. Yeah, when Canelo chose to stand and fight, he did the most damaging blows. But you can't fight 30 seconds of a three-minute round and expect to win a fight because you made the most damaging blows while this other person is outworking you. You know? It's just, I mean, that's why, and my dad actually said, you know, because my dad was a bit boxing fan as well. And he said, this is the reason why he stopped watching boxing. This right here. Because the judges, they're not watching the fight. They're just whoever is the most political person. Might might be getting paid on the table. Don't know. You know, but clearly Chavez won this fight when he did not win it. <laughs> they gave it to him. They gave this fight to him. And with boxing, when you get two or three fights, you know, lose like that, it's hard to bounce back. You know, not only that, you got to think of the training that you do. You put in four to five months of training at a time. This fight was supposed to happen in September. They got pushed back into October. I mean, clearly, and it said because of the cutting of hands, but obviously the reporter says that, you know, the reports was out that Chavez did not have any cuts on him. He wasn't, you know, no cuts, no all, you know, nothing. They was pushing the fight back because Chavez Jr. could not make weight. That was the bottom line. They pushed the fight back because of that. And he still didn't make weight. <laughs> so <laughs> that's that's crazy. That's this that fight was crazy. Um also on HBO they, they show um Stevenson, um this this um Canadian fighter who knocked out um Chad Dawson, just fought Clout. And he pretty much outboxed Clout. He did something that I didn't think he had the ability to do. You know, he was known for being a knockout slugger. But he showed he showed his boxing skill last night. Out boxed clout, cut him up, eyes all cut. And then he still had the powers even late in the rounds. I think they stopped the fight around the eighth or ninth round. Clout can see no more. But Bernard Hawkins showed the game plan on clout. That you give him some movement. You can't stick with him. That's what Stevenson did. He gave him some movement and outboxed him from the crunk gym. Um, he outboxed him. And cut him up. They had to stop the fight. That was a great fight. You know, He showed something that no one thought he didn't have was boxing skills, but he actually showed his boxing skills. Going backwards, slipping punches, dodging punches, moving, counting punching. I mean, he, he showed it. You know, foot, foot movement, footwork. I mean, he was actually doing the shuffle at one point in time, <laughs> dancing in the ring, you know. So that was a bad performance on Clout part. Clout need to get back in the gym, work on foot, foot movement, work on um, boxing, 
and fighting with opponent who's gonna move around. You know, cutting off the ring, dancing to the ring, stepping to him, slipping, you know, bobbing, weaving in, throwing, pop, pumping that jab out to you as you're trying to get closer because he just didn't have an answer and he couldn't adjust to it. So he just lost the fight. But, you know, great hard for Clout. You know, he tried his best. Um, great job for Stevenson. Give you a round of applause. You know, you did your thing. You came out with a um, victory. Um, but clearly, in boxing, man, when, you, when you're not the more political, connected fighter, you can't leave it in the judge's hands. It's clearly showed that. And I always said that even if I was boxing, I would never want to fight in Texas. <laughs> never want to fight in Texas. And pretty much don't want to fight in California. Because those are clearly two political states where, you know, the, mo the more political person is going to get the advantage. Always. And it proved tonight the same case. And also, I mean, you know, for these judges who's clearly not watching the fight, who's just clearly just giving the fights away, I mean, something needs to happen. You should have a judge review that review the, the uh, fight and talks with talk with the judges and see why they scored the fight the way they scored the fight after every fight. You know, clearly this was all three judges gave it to this to Chavez when clearly he didn't win the fight. And two of the judges had to had Chavez win almost every round except for two. You know, I can see kinda like one ninety I mean ninety four, ninety two or something like that where Chavez won by two points. And yeah, I'm like, oh man, I feel Chavez lost the fight, but mm, I, you know, you can go either or at that point. But clearly that 98, 92 scorecard, come on, dude, shoot yourself. Man, I mean, you know, so they clearly need to do something about that. I mean, because it's tainting the sport of boxing, you know, and not only did, you know, even Jim Lampert reported about it, it was like, what? You know, you even had the biggest fight of the year with Canelo Mayweather, and you had one judge had it even, 96-96, when clearly Mayweather outworked him. I mean, we're not, you know, outboxed him every round and pretty much won every round. And I suppose Canelo saying that he wasn't the greatest boxer, that he wasn't on the Mayweather level. You know, he's a great boxer, but he just wasn't on the May Mayweather level. I think he can beat a lot more people. But even going into the Austin Trout fight, I felt Canelo lost that fight. But... You know, you had one judge that had it 96-96 with the Canelo Mayweather fight. And that and she finally retired. They made her retire because that was just clearly, don't know what she was smoking on that night. <laughs> she was cray-cray. <laughs> she was on that crack-crack. <laughs> but, um, man, that's just like almost judging, man. I mean, that's clearly, I like boxing, but. Clearly, when judges are robbing fighters, you know if you if you fight your hard out and you lose, and it's and you clearly can see that you lost, and everyone say see that you lost, then you lost. There's no draw. Is no you didn't win. You clearly lost. Um, which brings me back to the point. Now I'm gonna give you a flip side version of this, and this was my own personal opinion. You can go back and watch my tapes and see it for yourself. Um, but the Bradley Pacquiao fight where everyone says Pacquiao won that fight clearly, you know, so I can kind of see both ways because everyone said Pacquiao won that fight and they don't know what the judges are smoking on. Clearly, I thought Bradley won the fight. You know, I, I felt Bradley would outbox him. I mean, I, I sit there and I watch that fight over and over again because I was like, man, what is wrong with my eyes if everyone's saying that Pacquiao won that fight? And you know, Timothy Bradley should have lost that fight. You know, I had to go back and review it myself like two or three times. And I have to watch the fight two or three times. And I watched it with no sound. And I didn't watch it right then. I actually came back like maybe like a month later and watched the fight again because I didn't want my judgment to be clouded about, you know, saying, okay, I'm just trying to prove my point that Pacquiao, I mean, Bradley won this fight and Pacquiao lost. No, I, I you know, let some old boxing go through them. You know, we had some great fights going on. And then I came back and I watched the fight again, maybe like a month or two months later. And, when I, you know, I was doing my own scorecards. And I still had Timothy Bradley winning by, you know, um, three rounds. Three rounds, clearly. I felt Timothy Bradley won that fight. But, you know, that's still opinion. So I can understand where judges can't go 
on fans' opinion, and they have to watch the fight for themselves and see and justify why they scored those rounds for whoever they scored the rounds for. You know, that's all I'm asking, you know. Like, you know, I gave you two scenarios. You know, Charvez Jr., I felt he lost that fight. The public opinion felt that he lost his fight. But they scored the round for him. They scored the fight for Charvez Jr. So I feel like those judges should be accountable for that. They have to go to the box. I feel like every fight that goes on, you should have to go to some boxing committee of judges that has been judging for a while. They can sit back and look at the fight as well and then ask judges, why did you score this fight for that? Or why did you give this round to that fighter? You know, on every fight, no matter if it was a clear victory or not, it should be every fight that you should have to go back and do this. Um, like I say, I felt Chavez Jr. lost that fight. But the judges still, still should go to this committee and make a point or their case on why they gave the fight to Chavez. Just like in the Tim Lee Bradley fight with Pacquiao, the judges should have go to the committee, even though they scored the fight for Pacquiao. I mean, Bradley... And I felt Bradley won the fight, but everyone said that Pacquiao won that fight. But still, regardless of the fact, the judges should go in front of this committee and explain how they gave this fight to Timothy Bradley. And if the, that panel agree with those judges, then the ruling stands. If not, then you need to overturn it and you need to do something. You need to have another way of judging each. You need to have a way of judging the judges. And making sure that, you know, because every judge go to class and, you know, and they're, they're always tested on how to judge a fight, how to break the fight up, you know, with judges and referees. So you should always have that renewal effect where you, you know, you get judged for your performance. No matter what you, if you judge in a the fight, then you getting judged on, you, you should have judges judging you judging the fight, <laughs> if that makes sense. Because when you go and do a job, you have you have your supervisor judging your work and your supervisor have to explain to your manager why you know so the manager your supervisor had to explain to your manager why this took place you know or why you did what you did you know so the you know man, the manager in this point should be a, ju a panel full of other judges and the supervisor at this point should be the judges of the fight <laughs> and of course the worker itself are the fighters <laughs> so i think something needs to be done um but of course you know two weeks ago you had the mayweather canelo fight and i was going to do another video all about this but i decided just to wait and roll it all into one where mayweather fought canelo pretty much one-sided fight mayweather i bought some I said it was going to be a snooze fest and it wasn't going to live up to the hype. But, you know, Mayweather shot me and I actually stayed in the pocket. And he fought Canelo in the pocket, up close. Canelo still couldn't hit him. And he was right in front of his face. Mayweather didn't run as much as everyone thought he was going to run or move around the ring. He didn't do that. He stayed in the pocket in that dude's face and fought. You know, Mayweather normally only do that for about three or four rounds to make sure that he, he was going to come out with that victory. But he did that the whole fight. So... But that's not my segment. I was actually wanting to talk about um, Bernard Hawkins. Everyone is saying who's next for who's next for Mayweather. Clearly, there's no one next for Mayweather. <laughs> I don't see another fighter out there in his weight class that can beat him. So now everyone's coming up with all these, you know, where he should even move up even further. You know, Mayweather has trouble fighting at 154. He doesn't even make weight for that. So when he fights these fighters at 154, they come in 10 to 15 pounds heavier than him. <laughs> you know, Mayweather's still at 146 or 147. <laughs> you know, so that's almost like a 30-pound advantage almost. So, you know, when he comes in to fight. There's no one in 140. There's no one at 147. And clearly, there's no one at 154 who I can pretty much say that Mayweather can go and fight. And that would be something that the public wants to see or the boxing fans want to see or the true hardcore boxing fans wants to see. Um, but what is getting a lot of steam is Mayweather fighting Bernard Hawkins, which are two legends in his prime fight. But the, the here's the problem. Bernard Hawkins saying he'll come down, he, he can come down to at least 161. Mayweather couldn't even fight at 154. 
So you're asking Mayweather to go up another 10 pounds or another seven or, you know, however many, another seven pounds to fight at 161 of Bernard Hawkins, which will be a great fight. But, you know, weight is the reason why we have weight classes. As you can see with this Chavez Jr. fight where the dude was supposed to come in at 161 and he came in at 173 and then he blew up to 186. It's the reason why we have weight classes because you can't come in and fight different weights because I'm sorry, man, if you weigh 135, there's nothing you can do to me to knock me out because you're going to have to hit me with something. I'm 205. I'm 250. You weigh 135. There's nothing you can do to to knock me out. <laughs> You're going to have to hit me with something. I'm a big dude. <laughs> At that point, it take another big dude to come knock me out. <laughs> well, that's the reason why you have weight classes in boxing. So you want Mayweather to fight Bernard Hawkins, which would be a great fight paper-wise, you know, chess-wise, you know, for those boxing, you know, the people who actually want to see the, not people just sit there and just, beat up on people and bleed them, you know, and, you know, just fight, you know, stand in front of each other and bang each other's brains out. But for those true boxing fans who actually want to see the sweet science of boxing, Mayweather versus Bernard Hawkins will actually be a great fight. Unfortunately, Bernard Hawkins can't come down. I can see if Bernard Hawkins can get down to 154, which at that point, I wouldn't even want to see Bernard Hawkins fight because I think he'll be too drained at that point. He couldn't make weight at that point. But if he... But Mayweather can't make 161. Mayweather is just not that big of a guy. He's not, you know, he's 5'8". He can't make 161. But no, Hawkins is, what, 6'1". Come on, dude. I mean, so, who's next for Mayweather? I don't know. Actually, I kind of want to, you know, I kind of want to see, you know, if, if the weight can happen at 154, I wouldn't mind saying Bernard Hawkins and Mayweather. You know. Or my, you know, or even do a catch weight at like one fifty eight or one fifty seven, you know, something like that, to, you know, and make it where you know I can kind of see that. But Mayweather can't make one fifty one sixty one, definitely can't make one sixty eight. Um, I don't know about Andre Ward. You know, he's a hell of a fighter too. I got you know he he beat everybody they put in front of him. He just been beating their ass. You know, point blank, point period. I kind of want to see that fight, but I think um, Andre Ward is too heavy. I think Andre Ward will fight at 168, maybe. I don't think Andre Ward is willing to go down to 154 to try to fight a Mayweather because, you know, that would definitely hurt Andre Ward at that point. Um, but I actually kind of want to see if Timothy Bradley beat Marquez. Now, you can go back and look at my uh, posting for or my prediction for that fight. Pretty much said that it's gonna be a draw, but if Timothy Bradley beat Marquez, I would definitely like. I would definitely want to see Timothy Bradley fight Garcia, and then if he beat Garcia, I want to see him fight Mayweather. If Pacquiao win his fight with Bam Bam Rios, I want to see Mayweather and Pacquiao. That's the only thing that makes sense, but who knows. Also last night they showed the uh, Bradley Marquez twenty four seven um, steroids you know drug testing you know they pretty much saying that um, Marquez was you know you know they think he he on that shit <laughs> but you know he not that Manny Pacquiao but as you if you go back and look at my posting for the uh, Marquez Manny Pacquiao fight I felt Marquez was losing that fight I, you know somebody was gonna get laid laid out. It, it, either it was going to be Marquez or Pacquiao. You can you can clearly see Pacquiao was going in for the kill. He wasn't finna lead this into the judge's hands or nothing. He was clearly going in for the kill. And on 24-7, Marquez said that I knew when he faints, he's finna jump in next. And that's what he was waiting for at the time. That's just clearly what you see when you fight a guy four times. You know they ins and outs. You know they happens. It's almost like you're a part of that person at that point. And clearly... Marquez came out with the victory. So, I'm actually looking, and I said, I'm actually looking forward to um, Marquez's fight and Timothy Bradley. I think it's, I think this fight is going to be better than um, 
Canelo Mayweather fight. I said that in my post, and I still stick by it. I think this is going to be a great, exciting fight. You know, um, Pacquiao got a fight coming up. I, I'm looking forward to that fight. Bam, man, he's going to stand in there. He's going to bang with you. He's going to sit there, and he's going to give it to you. You got to take it because he's going to take yours and give, you, give his. You know, um, So I'm actually looking forward to that fight. Didn't know Cotto was fighting. Cotto was fighting. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. I, I just didn't know anything about it until HBO announced it last night. Um, another fight I'm looking forward to seeing is Adrian Bronner fight. I want to see if Adrian Bronner can maintain that 147 weight. You know, they pretty much he pretty much jumped up and fought the easiest opponent, Polly. You know, who can knock nobody out, can't knock a fly out, and took his belt. But I want to see what happens when you get a real, true contender at 147. And see what, you know, see if he can still maintain that weight. You know, see if he can still maintain his knockout power. So, I, I actually, I'm going to do a post about that, that fight. And I just found out something else that I'm actually going to do another video blog about. is the um, the Donier Reganera 2 fight. You know, Reganera 2. Um, Reganera outboxed Donier De Nero, whatever his name is. The Filipino guy, they outboxed him. The first fight, everybody was shot. That was like a late decision. I mean, you know, clearly he, he won that fight. It was an upset. But I'm actually going to do another blog about that one as well. All right. Till next time, guys. Let me know what you think. Leave your opinions, your comments. Let me know how you feel about everything that I talked about. And... We'll go from there. Have a great one.